In November of 2003, I was in the mission office in Barcelona, Spain, starting my mission, just as a group of missionaries were finishing their mission. And my mission president said, we don't talk about this a lot, but it's a good thing to serve a mission, and it is also a good thing to finish a mission. And it was hard being on the starting end, looking at the guys that were going home, like I knew that I wanted to serve. But at the same time, I was feeling a little bit at homesick, but president was right. It was great to serve and it was great to finish. I had that same feeling 10 years back when I started the Engines of Liberty trilogy. And uh, as much fun as it was to write it, it was also really cool to finish it. And I'm having that same feeling now that I've finally wrapped up this absolute monstrous behemoth of a book called Shogun by James Clavell. Uh, I'm glad that I read it, and I am glad that it is over. Uh, granted, in the last update, I was very frustrated with just the fact that it wouldn't get off that subject of getting off, poor choice of words, but uh, it wrapped up much better than all of that. It just, I mean, Clavel must have been in a, in a dry spell or something. The conclusion of the book is concentrated primarily on the political maneuverings between Toranaga and Ishido, and another character named Yabu, and all of that stuff that was going on in the periphery of the, uh, the relationship between Blackthorn and Mariko. But Blackthorn and Mariko had roles to play in it, and so it was important to understand what all was going on. It was very... I, I don't want to attribute this primarily to Game of Thrones storytelling. That's just kind of the most prominent example in modern pop culture. Just where there are a whole lot of power players making moves, trying to hold on to power or scheme and maneuver to attain it, presenting a face saying, I'm doing this one thing, and then in the shadows you're moving another way. Ultimately, Toranaga outmaneuvered Ishido, who had a bunch of uh, noblemen's families held hostage, and Mariko knew about it, and blah, blah, blah. There was just a, a lot going on there. Uh, ultimately, Mariko uh, dies in the, the climax of all of this. Uh, she threatens to commit seppuku. Um, she's given back to Toranaga. Ishido had her in custody. But then later, Ishido sends ninjas into Toronaga's complex, and it's it's complicated to explain it all. But uh, you know, if you've seen the original series, I don't know if the Hulu series does this. Like I said, I've, I've heard that the Hulu series is good, but uh, I don't have Hulu. Um, but you you know that she doesn't make it out, and that's key because she ends up willing. A huge amount of her resources and estate like leave some money behind for Blackthorn along with a letter one of those like hey if you're reading this it means I'm dead type things you know telling him you know, here's here's what you need to do on Jin Sun which was one of the names that they have for him uh, throughout the maneuvering and the, the all the other stuff in the climax of the book Blackthorn's ship the Erasmus is burned and sent, sunk Sinked? Sank? I can't ever remember. Whatever. In, uh, in the harbor. And he's, uh, he's now shipless. But the massive amount of funds that Mariko leaves for him gives him the resources that he needs to build another one. And uh, he starts planning for what the future is going to look like. It is a very powerful conclusion to a long saga of this one man's adventure in Japan and how it changed him. And I think it was especially highlighted when he runs into his old crew and he sees just how much they've changed. And you'd think that, well, he would have thought at the beginning of the story that he was going to be very committed to his Englishness or his European vanity. Ah, I'm not going to say that again. But uh, he couldn't help but be changed by the level of immersion that he had in Japanese culture. And he started to value some of the things that the Japanese did, and by the end, he's a different man. If I were to read all of the Jack Reacher novels that I've read so far in a row, I would be hard-pressed to say that 
Jack Reacher is any different at the end than he was at the beginning. He's certainly gone through things that have had an influence on him, but he's more or less the same kind of guy. With the Longmire books, there is more of an arc there. He goes from being kind of a carefree widower to, you know, moving back into having a relationship and uh, things with Henry are changed. Things are definitely changed with his daughter. There's progress there. One of the reliable things about a series is just knowing what you're going to get into every time a new book comes out. But a little bit of progress along the way is merited. Um, Shogun is about the length of, say, five Reacher novels or Longmire novels. And so if you stack it up that way, yeah, it's it's not as long as like other series I've read with uh, a focal character who's you know, in a situation, and that's that. Um, he's not necessarily on the hero's journey. He's just a, a man of a certain time and place and culture, dropped headfirst and neck deep. That doesn't work. Whatever. Like, completely immersed in it. And it's the story of how it affects him, the role that he plays in it, and the influence that it has on him. And there's a lot of great things to learn from it. And there are some beautiful turns of phrase and some, some great takeaways along the way. Uh, you know, my frustrations with it primarily are twofold. One, just the overall length of the story, which this bug can be a feature for some. For me, it's just, wow, this thing is really long-winded. And uh, two, like just the, the constant examination of sexual practices in the story throughout. But I've, I've said enough on that front. Overall, uh, it was a, a good experience having read it, and I'm glad that it's over. I've gone ahead and looked at the other books in James Clavell's Asian Saga. I don't know a whole lot about Clavell himself, but uh, apparently he's just one of these uh, super weebs who loves various... Asian cultures. The following book is not a book about Blackthorn. It's not even a book about Japan. It's a book about Canton, about Hong Kong. Um, it's got a completely different cast of characters. Obviously, it's about a different culture. Uh, I believe that book is called Taipan. I could be wrong. And then later, there's a book called Gaijin, and there's a whole bunch of others. He just wrote books about, so far as I understand, Europeans or uh, you know, other Westerners immersing themselves in different Asian cultures. And those books comprise the Asian saga. Uh, I think at this point it would be interesting to read a biography of Clavel and find out what his background was that drove him to write these things. But it's one of those sagas where it's, it's not really about the characters. It's about the setting as a character. Um, who was the director? I can't remember. A British comic director. He's got three movies that he refers to as the Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy. One of them is Shaun of the Dead. Uh, one of them is, uh, I believe it's called like The World's End. And then the one of them is uh, Hot Fuzz. And like the, the idea is that these are all like one's red, one's green, one's blue. And um, these are all like, if you were to watch all three of them, they would have similar sensibilities. I think they've all got Simon Pegg in them. Uh, similar comedy styles, cinematography styles, like all together they make a trilogy. Even if the characters and the stories aren't connected, it's the style that's connected. Um, Baz Luhrmann has a similar trilogy. I think the, the Red Curtain trilogy, one of them is... Um, his Romeo and Juliet, it was that was Lerman, right? And then Moulin Rouge and uh, one other, like uh, uh, Simply Ballroom. I could, I, I don't know. I don't know his body of work as well. Uh, Taylor Sheridan has one with Wind River and Hell or High Water and one other one. Um, it's a motif that I'm not entirely familiar with, but when it's laid out like that, like, oh, okay, I kind of get this. Um, Setting his character is a concept that fascinates me. And uh, the level of detail that Clavel brings when he's examining that does make it an enriching experience, if a very long-winded one. 
overall, I do recommend this, um, especially if you've seen either the mini series from the 80s or I, I guess the new one. Uh, it was good. Just uh, you guys know what my hangups were on it. I'm not really worried about reading the other ones in it. Uh, it was kind of a bittersweet and poetic send off for Blackthorn at the end there, knowing that he was changed by all this. He's going to go do what he wanted to do early on, but he can't help but be by, you know, be changed by the process of everything that he went through. And that's fine. I do have another extremely long Japanese book called uh, Musashi, who I, I can't remember right now off the top of my head who the author is. It was one of those that I grabbed on an Audible sale. It was like five bucks. But it's another one of those just like massive Japanese epics that I might do this with. The same thing where I, I listen to a couple of chapters and give my thoughts on it. Uh, but I'm in no rush to do it right now. I've got plenty of other things that I want to read and, and do a protracted series on. So I'll get to that when I get to it. But to all of you who have been watching these and to the few of you that have watched every single one of these, I appreciate you for following along. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are on Shogun if you've watched or read it. And until next time, drive safe. See you out there.